नमस्कार आई दिल्ली आप सभी लोगों का इस प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में स्वागत करता है आज आप लोगों को संबोधित करने के लिए हमारे साथ हैं आई दिल्ली के निदेशक प्रोफेसर रंगन बनर्जी उप निदेशक प्रचालन प्रोफेसर टी आर श्रीकृष्णन प्रोफेसर नारायण डी करूर डीन एकेडमिक्स प्रोफेसर सुनील कुमार खरे डीन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट प्रोफेसर आदित्य मित्तल डीन स्टूडेंट्स अफेयर्स प्रोफेसर अभिजीत आर अभ्यंकर डीन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोफेसर पी वी राव डीन प्लानिंग प्रोफेसर एस के खरे डीन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट एंड कॉरपोरेट रिलेशंस प्रोफेसर पी वी मधुसूदन राव डीन एलुमनाई रिलेशंस डॉक्टर दीपिका भास्कर रजिस्ट्रार डॉक्टर अनिल वाली एम डी फिट प्रोफेसर शांतनु रॉय फॉर्मर डीन एकेडमिक्स प्रोफेसर सागनिक डे प्रोफेसर इन सेंटर फॉर एटमोस्फेरिक साइंसिस एंड डॉक्टर अनिशा मदान हेड ऑफिस ऑफ करियर सर्विसेज Now uh, I request Professor uh, Nidhi Professor Nidhi Jain uh, the sorry, associate dean faculty Professor Nidhi Jain he is she is associate dean faculty and uh, the convocation is tomorrow and I hope I hope that some of you I hope most of you will be attending our convocation so we would like to I'll take you through a very quick presentation uh, some of coming in after that But during that semester, the other students were in the hybrid mode, some online, some offline. From April onwards, we had one special semester, which was a special lab semester, offline semester, to ensure that all the students who had missed some of the physical labs could come. And then, going forward, from August, we had completely offline. So now we had the new batches coming in, and for many of the students, many of the student activities that were there. So what happened is the students, staff, faculty members, everyone was very excited about coming back. Initially, hesitantly, but then this is so we had many of the events which we used to have two years back so offline, and then we had been uh, doing things. Yeah, hybrid mode. So those are some of the images. Uh, so, uh, so basically, this is uh, just glimpses of it. So that's that was main. The main thing that if you see, and the main thing that if you see, uh, what characterizes the one main thing that we have seen is that we have now come back, and we've hopefully gone past that that phase, and we are very excited, and we are now looking at. going forward and and going forward in a way where we we progress beyond what we used to do in the past so that's the thing we had as a part of that we tried to have a lot of collaborations we had the student teacher interaction dinners in the hostel and there was a very uh, very well attended uh, and this was just at the beginning of that march when we were starting of the uh, offline classes and everything we had every single whether it's the festival the event all of these uh, being celebrated with the usual excitement that is there in the campus and we had and I'm, many of you were there in it we had uh, the we had our diamond jubilee but we had uh, extended it because we wanted to have one physical event and the closing ceremony of the diamond jubilee we were fortunate to have uh, the honorable president here with us and the honorable president inaugurated the research and innovation park and uh, so so that was the, uh, we also started uh, with uh, the new uh, dean and the new office of diversity the office of diversity and inclusion with a dedicated dean and uh, we had uh, the um, the honorable uh, justice dr chandrachur Uh, as the chief guest who uh, gave the talk uh, and inaugurated and initiated this event we had our first dean professor anjali multani who has been appointed as the dean of diversity and uh, inclusion and there are many different activities that we are uh, planning to ensure that uh, we can have we can remove all the barriers that are there and then we can actually go to a campus which is truly inclusive 
uh, by numbers, IIT Delhi by numbers and I think many of you are familiar, we are about 600 faculty members, about 12,000 students and overall we are looking at, if you look at the total amount of uh, flows, we are talking of about 1,300 crores annually. Uh, we get roughly in the order of 300 and, uh, 380, 390 crores of uh, research funding and um, about 3,600 publications. In this convocation, we will be giving 2,100 degrees and uh, with uh, 300 plus uh, PhD degrees. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the areas and, and, and so on and about 100 plus patents which are filed um, and uh, uh, around 100 uh, international students. Uh, so, that is sort of. Um, uh, ranking, uh, our performance has been improving in the ranking. We are amongst the top few in the country and uh, even globally uh, in many of these subjects, we are in the 50 to 100 band uh, globally. And uh, so, this is something as we improve, of course, the rankings will also keep improving. The other interesting thing is, we actually attract students from all across the country. This graphic that you see is the current batch of students who are coming in through the JE advanced and you can see that it spread out, the people are spread out from all over the country. Uh, we are also one of the most preferred destinations. We have 23 IITs, but uh, out of those 23 IITs, if you see 28 in the first 100 joined IIT Delhi, 127 in the top 500, 211 in the top 1000, which means that essentially students do like IIT Delhi and they are coming from all across the country. Uh, we, we, in, the, uh, in this year, we have uh, admitted 1200 uh, students at the undergraduate level, 800 in the masters and 600 PhD. Uh, in, this dig, uh, in this convocation, of the 2100 degrees that we are giving, I just like to point out the few degrees which are notable. We have one student who is getting a joint PhD from uh, IIT Delhi and the Taiwanese University. And we have also, this is for the first time we are giving the degrees, the joint PG diploma in visionary leadership for manufacturing, uh, which is a program run jointly by IIT Delhi and NITI. And we have also the degrees on MSc in Cognitive Science, MSc in Economics. These are the first time the graduates will be, the, these are programs which have started, but this is the first degree which is started two years back and the Master of Science in uh, Research in Sensors, Instrumentation and Cyber Physical. So, these are the new degrees apart from the existing ones. In this period, we have started some new programs and you can see Bachelor in Design and several MTechs, transportation safety, biomolecular, bioprocess engineering, machine intelligence, data science, uh, MTech as well as MSR. So, you can see that in keeping with the NEP, we have a, we are introducing new programs with a diversity of disciplines. So, we are talking of design, we are talking of economics, cognitive science and so on and then this will continue. Uh, going forward, uh, this is, you are familiar with, nothing new, just saying that we are uh, actually our domain span, uh, we have 16 departments, 11 centers, schools, centers of excellence and we have gone beyond the traditional science and engineering and uh, we are moving towards a full-fledged university. Um, we in academics, we also have a very strong thrust on academic outreach and I am sure some of you have reported on some of these. Uh, we had an, in Sonipat, in our other campus, we had an academic outreach day for all the uh, Haryana government colleges. Uh, we created, we had a in, very interesting event which is change makers. We got a select set of students to work in teams, school students, uh, spent summers and they were mentored and then they made products and then this was the boot camp as well as the product. So, this was a very interesting thing. It is a small number which was pre-selected, but this is something we want to go forward with. We have a popularization uh, lecture series, the SciTech lecture series. We also have a set of videos for students that is called the PAL, where we provide videos in English and in Hindi for students preparing for the JE 
Uh, so there are many and we will be doing many more such things in academic outreach. We are also planning to do some uh, outreach for parliamentarians as we was mentioned. We have in the research, as we, I talked to you about the overall research funding and uh, we also have a significant amount of funding coming from industry. So through the IRD and the FIT, uh, we have a number of different uh, research uh, mechanisms sponsored projects, consultancy projects, centers of excellence. We also fund ourselves uh, seed funds so that our faculty members collaborate with law, with uh, medicine, with a variety of you can see agriculture and this is these are multi institutional multidisciplinary projects. This is again part of NEP and part of our thing of trying to see when you look at a problem, it is not about disciplines and domains. So you can see with NLU, with ILBS, with AIMS, uh, RCB, Immunology, Ashoka University, these are all where we have projects where faculty from each of these and IIT Delhi and with funding <coughs> from us. So that's, that is something which we will scale. Uh, some initiatives, uh, some salient features, we have an atmospheric observatory in Sonepat and uh, we, you know, every day if you see today's news, uh, we are talking about grab coming in and uh, we want to do something. This is, this is a difficult problem but a problem which has solutions and uh, we think models, monitoring, an atmospheric observatory, it will be one of the state of the art oh, I, the observatory in the country which is coming up at Sonepat, it's, uh, most of the equipment has already been installed. Uh, we have some of the technologies with DRDO, the optical, the quantum communication link uh, between Prayagraj and Vindyachal, uh, a 100 kilometer link, uh, this was one of the, one of the salient uh, outcomes of this year's project. Uh, the, the a vehicle which is a hybrid which with dimethyl ether fuel and this was the interesting thing is it's a manuf it's a collaboration between the uh, manufacturing industry Indian oil uh, DST and IIT Delhi and uh, then the DRDO uh, the indigenous lightweight uh, bulletproof vessel uh, so there are a n number of and we are part of the 5G test bed. Again, we have many uh, interesting uh, test bed use cases within our campus. Uh, we have uh, state of the art central research facilities, uh, all, some in our Hoskas campus, some in Sonepat and we are looking at the Sati and this is something where these facilities used not only by our own community but also accessible to others across the country. Uh, we signed again, uh, the, the NSF director was here, gave a talk and also at that time through our in, uh, hub for Cobotics, uh, we have 23 joint projects between uh, Indian universities and uh, US universities. Out of these 12 projects are from IIT Delhi and this was uh, this was also signed. This is some of the infrastructure we have. As you all know, we have a very severe space constraint and we also have a shortage in terms of hostels and space. So this year, this academic year, we have three hostels coming up with one th which have been now uh, occupied and 1,200, 1,208 rooms combined in all the three, but it's still we need to add more. So this is Dronagiri, Saptagiri and the Sayadri. Sayadri is a girls hostel which is next to Kailash and Himadri. And uh, we had this uh, Mittal sports complex and we will be having also the inter IIT meet uh, in that. Uh, let me go forward. Yukvidar, uh, our collaboration with the University of Queensland uh, reached a landmark with uh, 100 PhD students. Um, and there was this University of Queensland leadership team had come and spent three, four days in the country. We have a number of collaborations. I'm not going to go into details of this. Uh, we, during the teaching award, uh, the uh, 
curriculum review committee provided its first concept note and Professor Aditya Mittal is here, he is also our Dean Student Affairs, but he was chairing this committee and we had uh, developed basically what are the features which should be there in the new curriculum. This committee now has gone to each of the departments and has got feedback. We are now getting feedback from students and we will then have a draft which will be ready for feedback from society. And there is what we are thinking of how to do this. We will have separate meetings with industry and society and maybe we will have something like a town hall meeting for anyone who is interested to give that. The idea is to look at a new curriculum coming out in 2023 academic year. So that is the kind of thing. Many of our faculty colleagues have got several awards and you can see three new fellows of academy. Uh, the INA Fellowship, Fellow of o Operation Research Society, uh, Fellow of the Librarian, the uh, Meghnath Saha Memorial Lecture Award, Professor Ram Gopal Rao and the, the Young uh, uh, Engineer Awards for our young faculty members and Distinguished uh, Faculty Awards and, and so on. So the list etc. is there. We also are, we have almost 500 staff members and uh, we would like to celebrate uh, the performance, stellar performance of the staff and we have uh, well, had uh, 17 uh, Sanstan awards uh, to recognize all these staff members who have made an initiative. Student achievements, uh, the, for, um, our Formula 1 racing team and uh, the, also the uh, coding, uh, the, uh, the, our CS student uh, Kalash uh, actually uh, got the Global Coding Prize uh, from IIT Delhi. These are again some of the student, uh, uh, you know I told you that we started up with a, um, with a lot of excitement, this had a lot of footfalls, the cultural festival rendezvous which was in April, Tris, the technical festival. We conducted the 36th Inter-Aquatics meet and this was the first time uh, that the, um, for an uh, Inter-IIT meet where the touchpad was used. Normally you have a judge and then there is, you know, you see the video and there's disputes. Now we have an electronic touchpad, it was used for the first time and there were, so this was an uh, interesting uh, thing. Uh, we've been doing uh, and uh, our head OCS is here, we've, we've been, uh, we've always had, we are actually Amongst all the institutes, we are actually amongst the most, we have mo the most employable graduates and uh, we have had an excellent placement season uh, with uh, 1,100 students being placed. These are some of the companies and uh, we can give you more details of this. Uh, we are recognizing a number of distinguished alumni in different domains uh, including, yeah, which one? 1,800, that's okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, we uh, in different domains, in entrepreneurship, in academics, uh, in service and I would just like to mention one of the interesting uh, distinguished alumni, the Rear Admiral G.K. Harish and uh, we have a program which is in uh, a DIIT uh, in uh, naval construction. And this is, a, this is a program which has been running for uh, decades now and it is a very interesting program when the, uh, some of our alumni have been actually involved in the INS Vikrant, uh, in the indigenous uh, development of INS Vikrant and we are delighted that we are uh, recognizing Rear Admiral G.K. Harish who is the first distinguished alumnus from the DIIT program, not just from the B.Tech and the M.Tech and Ph.D. that we have and, and so that's, that was an interesting. We have details of all these, I am not going to go into this. Uh, Dr. Sashi Reddy uh, is uh, been also given the Distinguished Alumni Service Award and he's been actually pushing our endowment fund. These are some of the younger awardees, uh, the graduates of last decade ago. And this is something which I also showed in the during our uh, closing ceremony we are uh, focusing on enhancing our student experiencing uh, student experience we are looking at reimagining and making a, looking at the institute uh, infrastructure for the future making a long term plan for iit delhi in internationalization uh, we are looking at two way um, international linkages 
and the UQDAR and also we are setting up the IIT Abu Dhabi. Uh, we are trying to see that we make an impact on societal problems and uh, clean air and rural and small and medium industry and then industry connect we are trying to enhance. Uh, we are planning um, a new, uh, we have already made a plan for Sonepat and as I talked to you about the atmospheric observatory, we also have a drone uh, facility at the Sonepat and we are also having high end uh, the Sathi and the central research facility there. In Jhajjar, we are planning to have a healthcare hub. We are also planning to have um, sports medicine and performance improvements, especially for paraplegics and, and special sports. And uh, we had uh, recently, about a month or so back, uh, the uh, committee of the Haryana MLAs had asked us to make a presentation to them. So, we presented our vision for the Jajjar campus and uh, they seem to be on board. So, this is one of the things we will have more to say about this in the future. But we are, uh, we have about more than 80 faculty members who work in various aspects of healthcare and along with NCI Jajjar, we are planning uh, the Jajjar campus to be a major uh, to have a major thrust on healthcare. And uh, right now we are uh, just uh, doing the fencing and starting the initiation of that campus. Uh, but in the next few years we should have much more. And we will have a proposal in the next few months with more details of what we have to do. So with this I would just like to stop here. This is just a quick overview and uh, uh, the, I I think you may have many questions. All my colleagues are here. They will be in a better position to answer some of your questions. Um, so thank you for your patience and it is over to you. Okay, so um, no, so uh, roughly, I we can get you the number. I think so far, in terms of actual money received, it's about 169, 170 crores. In the last year, 79 crores we got. The commitments is much larger. Um, so two questions. You have. आपका दो क्वेश्चन था एक एक है कि एंडोमेंट फंड किस तरह से बढ़ रहा है तो और सेकंड स्टार्टअप के बारे में एंडोमेंट फंड एंड एलुमनाइ के साथ हमने एक स्कीम बनाया है कि स्टूडेंट्स जो है हमारे स्टूडेंट्स जिनको स्टूडेंट्स वो आर इंटरेस्टेड इन स्टार्टअप्स कैन कम अप विथ प्रपोजल्स एंड वी गिव अप टू फिफ्� are actually reviewing them and we give up to 50 lakhs as an initial funding for students to do this. Uh, we are also looking at our innovation is ecosystem and I think Dr. Wali can add what are the initiatives we are doing in this. But we are trying to get alumni to talk with our existing students and encourage them, give them their inputs and do this. Second is we are trying to also give them initial funding. We have a mechanism also uh, where you can have, they can take deferred placement. So they can come back and uh, and do that, but Dr. Wali will give you more details. Can we talk about offline? I mean, so the others can get a chance to ask you. Sir, yes, sir, yes, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Aap, aap thora bol lije. So, aside of the funding, take those alumni, those endowment funds, those 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 but besides that, there are uh, other funds within the ecosystem which are available to the startups who are primarily uh, housed in our incubator. But then we are not just confining ourselves to the startups which are part of the incubator, but we are we have a larger footprint wherein startups from within the region rather than the entire country, depending upon the scheme, they are eligible to apply because all these uh, supports, whether as investment or as grants, are competitive in nature. 
Now, besides this, I think uh, maybe you may be also interested to know we are exploring the very strongly the option of initiating an alternate investment fund where FIT, which is the body of IIT Delhi, will be uh, committing some amount of money so that we are able to create a reasonably uh, small fund of 20 to 30 crores and uh, help the student startups uh, take their ideas forward. हमारे जो अभी currently हमारे जो इस वक्त हमारे पास startups हैं वो मैं आपको numbers में भी दे सकता हूँ ये are forty so we have forty seven startups currently in our incubators right मैं इसमें हमारे जो सोनी पत्ते incubator हैं उसके numbers गिन नहीं रहा हूँ और इसके अलावा besides this we have eleven startups in our accelerator which is fifty eight in all but I will also like to mention here that because of the new facility which is coming in place, that is the, our research and innovation park, so at one point in time we will be having more than 100 startups on the campus. Sir, who is this campus? UAE campus. UAE campus. UAE campus. Um, we are actually we will um, talk about this a little later once we have more details but we are working on it and it is um, i mean we, it will happen reasonably soon but we won't like to uh, because we are working with uh, the um, uh, abu dhabi counterpart and uh, we will um, once we have something more concrete than we would like to talk. So I don't want to. <laughs> you know, every question you ask gets us to reveal all the. So we things are. It is in a. It is a. It is a. You know, it is being done in a fast track mode. I don't want to commit to a date now, but uh, yeah, we. We have what we have done is we have appointed. Uh, our ex dean uh, academics is the coordinator. We have appointed a coordinator for the IIT UAE, and we have an office, and we are so we are actually we are we have fast tracked it, and we are doing it quickly. But I yeah, I'm not in a position to share too much details now because we are working that out. Next year, Jan Feb, may we will be able to give you more details, and with. Some more concrete is that? That's fair, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, the point is, we, being in Delhi, we believe that we can, uh, and as a national institute we believe that we have a role in providing inputs to our policy makers where we are talking in terms of technology science and other fields looking at research and actually giving people input so that the decision policy making can be based with an understanding of what is happening so we have uh, uh, we spoke to the ministry about it and the ministry is keen and uh, we are working out the mechanism of how we will do this. So the idea is to have um, groups of faculty members going to parliament and talking to MPs and then so and there are we propose certain things in the domain of uh, some of the things like 5G, AIML, we are looking at climate and the air quality issues, all of the issues which are of importance nationally and we will uh, essentially talk about what does the what does research tell and what are the kind of things and uh, so so that's the uh, it's still the way in which this will happen is being worked out but uh, we have made that uh, we have made that approach and it's an intent which we will uh, we should have this so we should have it soon आप तो जानते हैं सभी चीजें
So we will we will work that out. So that is so what I am saying is it's going stage by stage. So this is what we mean because we think that uh, it will help us also because it will give us a connect to understand what our representatives are concerned about, and that input will also be useful also for us to communicate. And in the language and in understanding what is, so I think it is going to be enriching. So we have gone to that, and as you rightly said, the ministry has written to the uh, speaker, and so we will we'll take that forward. We will we will do this. It's not yet done, but it's just a. Uh, sir, recently the eleventh report by the office official language uh, committee came out and mentioned. IIT, IITs and uh, IIMs and the major, the, the primary sort of subjects for uh, propagating uh, Hindi language, Hindi language education, uh, especially taking up Hindi as a primary uh, mode of uh, teaching. Uh, on the other hand, there have been several steps by the uh, central government and state governments to uh, promote uh, technical education books, reading materials uh, in Hindi and regional languages. Now we are entering the placement season and also coming up for, uh, for the coming up seasons. What are the kind of implications, positive or uh, otherwise, that you think that this might have for <coughs> students coming to IIT Delhi and moving to the placement? It's a difficult question to answer. And See, we are committed to making sure that our students get the best experience. So what we are focusing on today is that our intake students, if people have a problem with English, we are trying to provide inputs for that. The second thing that we are also trying to see is if faculty colleagues, if you have books and you want to translate, if there are in mediums where people have in different languages and if we can provide some support, we can try and look at that. We are looking at things like natural language processing and translation. Having said that, we have not actually looked at completely the, you know, we are sort of enabling that and we are not looking at, we have not thought through the implications of a complete transformation, we are looking on this as a gradual, where we, we provide support in different languages and uh, we have also international students who want to learn Hindi, so we have been doing and uh, so, um, so I think uh, I, there is nothing more I would be able to add on that. Would you like to add anything on this? In the language. Yeah, uh, we do have a dedicated Hindi cell, and uh, primarily uh, based on the government policy, what has happened is that <coughs> we had gone ahead with uh, in ensuring that there is a high level of Hindi being used in all communication among the faculty, with the administration, and within that administration. The area that the director was pointing out, where our, we are still, you know, trying to do whatever the best we can do is with respect to the teaching teaching learning activity, whether it is classroom teaching or in a, uh, laboratory level teaching learning activities. There things are, uh, we are looking at what are the possibilities. We already had a couple of meetings with our staff, our faculty who are also, you know, you also need to require for these uh, faculty who are very knowledgeable in their subject as well as in the other language. So both of that I mean, happening together is a prerequisite for anything like this. So we already had a couple of meetings with our faculty colleagues. Who are who are shown interest in doing that? So this is a process which is on the on the. We have a uh, the, from the Hindi cell. We have a magazine called Jigasha, where we look at uh, the uh, R and D papers are translated or written in Hindi, and then we try to do that. So we are sort of. We are, we are looking at it not as a conflict, we are looking at it as a way in which we can enlarge the offerings that we have. Sir, so if I may, I'm so sorry, but if I may quickly ask one uh, question about the international outreach uh, as well. Recently, numbers have shown that uh, international student enrollment in other universities, and I'm, uh, I'm not sure of the IIT uh, numbers, which is why I'm asking 
uh, have sort of fallen and there are several reasons for that. Uh, what has been the IIT experience about international student enrollments and what are the kind of next steps going forward? I've been international will answer that. Um, yeah, over the last two years we saw a significant reduction in the number of students and for obvious reasons, you know, they, um, they could not come here. Many of them who were made offers could not travel, you know, the offers had to be rescinded. So uh, the numbers have definitely come down. We are hoping that uh, you know, we will have our next uh, major uh, admission season in March. And so we are uh, gearing towards that, making sure that we inform through our embassies, through embassies in India, uh, all potential partners, uh, and through our, our partners uh, to, to we reach out to students so that they can apply to us. Um, you already perhaps know we have <coughs> we offer 500 uh, PhD fellowships, fully funded PhD fellowships to international students. And uh, <coughs> Delhi is also the coordinator for the ASEAN, for the uh, Government of India program, which offers 1,000 PhD fellowships to ASEAN students. Uh, so uh, <coughs> there is a lot of effort that is going on in that direction. Um, still, early step, early days. <coughs> It's going to be time before, sometime before we can... Naveen, you may want to mention that uh, we had a whole delegation of press people from the ASEAN and they came here and we talked to them about how we can popularize. Right. Yeah. So, so we, we do, we make all efforts, <coughs> as uh, Professor Banerjee is mentioning, we, uh, you know, we had a large delegation from uh, the Indian Embassy in Delhi, we had a large delegation from the Indian Embassy in Delhi, we had a large delegation from the Indian Embassy in Delhi, we had a uh, we, we are using all modes we can to reach out and uh, uh, there are challenges in you know, having students come here. Uh, we have not ever tried to compromise our standards and that is one of the biggest challenges. We will never <coughs> reduce the uh, admission standard for a person who is <coughs> That's one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, Professor Banerjee, uh, I'm Vashant Mohanty from Telegraph newspaper. I'm just curious to know if the UWS quota which has been implemented and 25% seats have been increased, what is the commensurate fund that the IIT Delhi has got? What is the commensurate uh, faculty position expansion that has happened in the last two, three years time ever since this in, uh, reservation has been implemented? And uh, what is the faculty student uh, ratio at moment? Okay. Different questions. May, uh, the EWS fund, uh, Dean Planning will uh, tell you more detail. I'll yeah. tell, uh, talk uh, about Government that. of India promised the 66.28 crores for construction of part of the academic complex. Partly we have received that and complex is going to start, construction starts in this year. So as and when construction is started, then we will get the revenue. You want to talk, Nidhi, you want to talk about the faculty thing or should? Faculty uh, strength, the current faculty function strength with us is 776 and with this increase in the quota, uh, some new number, about 1000 is on the way but still, uh, you know, that is, that is yeah. going. This uh, sanction, sanction strength, uh, please don't talk about that 776 number. We are actually, the sanction uh, strength is like 1 is to 10, so it's, it's about we can, yeah, yes. it's about 1,200, but uh, we have 612 faculty members in place, okay. right? 612 faculty members in place. Additionally, we also have postdoctoral fellows, and uh, those uh, those uh, faculty numbers are not linked to the EWS. Your question was that as a result of the EWS expansion. So we've been. See, what happens in this is we have a process where every year we have, so for instance, in the last, since the last convocation, I think we made 67 offers out of which 47 have already joined, some are in process. So that's the, we keep increase, we keep doing selections, but we need to have a, we need really good faculty members and then it, there's a process to do that. So there is no specific thing because EWS has increased that we increase the, we are, the, we are not, hitting the limit that we have, because the limit is we can go up to 1 is to 10. And you saw 12,098 students which we had. So, so that's, the, that's the thing. We are constantly, we are trying to see, we have many rounds of faculty recruitment and we had also, uh, I think, 
five or six six special drives which we are some of them are currently in place so that's the you can do the numbers <laughs> so, so the, see what happens in this is the numbers different rating agencies have different ways of calculating so you take whether it's only to the teaching faculty or you add the pdf so accordingly those numbers change yeah. so i was asking because when you uh, when i did delhi applied for ioe status then ioe agreement also look uh, one of the objective is to reach 110 that time the iit delhi has one is to 13 or 14 so in that perspective yeah you are right see so the point in this is you know the unfortunate thing is this is not something where we can say okay we'll get this and we'll get 300 faculty and you can't do it tomorrow because you have to also see the quality so we are increasing the numbers but gradually we will go to that. Sir, yes, that time when ioi was sanctioned the ratio was 1 is to 17 and in fact currently we are around 1 is to 14.5 or something if we it would have been much better if we would have reached about 1 is to 12 or so if ews and girls quota was not there because of that though we have improved our faculty our students have also increased so we are going in right direction but it will take some more time now we have almost kind of achieved this uh, ews uh, percentage and girls quota percentage students may not increase that much but faculty would increase in next two three years and then we may reach 1 is to 10 maybe in another two, two three years yeah, in the last three years we have uh, hired more than 125 faculty Seven just uh, the last year, the offers were made. Forty-seven joined, so roughly ballpark figure is one twenty-five in the last three years. Three years. Last year, three years. Sir, Umar Bharat Abhiyan ka Lord Abhiyan, which is the Institute of Education, we are in the middle of the journey. And you guys have been working on many things. Social impactful projects. What are the plans for the future? What are the plans for the future? What are the plans for the future? जिला बनाई है कि इन स्टेट्स में और जो है कोलैबोरेशन करके जो है इस अभियान को आगे बढ़ाया जाएगा बाकी इसमें भी चीजें हैं उनको साथ में जो है लाया जाएगा इस तरीके से और आगे बढ़ाया जाएगा। Actually, I have the numbers somewhere, but उन्नत भारत अभियान is a national program. तो इसमें already there are I'll give you those numbers. We'll give you a booklet. IIT 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 Delhi की योजना जो है इसमें science engineering and colleges across the country we are partnering with one of the things that we are doing is that we are providing a mechanism for our young students to spend time in the villages with fellowships and then they identify research problems we have also got different research thrust areas whether it is water whether it is clean energy and in those thrust areas we each of these so we are facilitating we are also doing some of these ourselves this is also providing a mechanism for our own students to have a internship in a rural area so but going forward what are the plans that uh, we will of course look at this we are also seeing what kind of value we can provide in terms of enhancing the employment enhancing innovation one of the other things which the government has done is they are now trying to see how unnat bharat avyan and the atal innovation centers can link together so that we are talking of rural as well as entrepreneurship and the ministry has been now saying that uh, earlier aic which was done through niti aayog the synergies between this and they want us to actually have a workshop to see what is the next phase that was your question ki iske baad kya hai and ye to ha numbers to hai numbers hai numbers ye ye areas mein kaam hoga wo aapko hum offline bhi de sakte hain we can give you the booklet we can show you those but the question is beyond the numbers to increase the impact that is the focus so the numbers are there numbers are growing but we want to increase the impact that is the next next actually we actually can come yes so for unnat bharat abhiyan har state mein ek regional coordinating center hai sari states mostly covered hai numbers will give you i can tell you the numbers right away and wo jo regional coordinating center hai then they liaison with each district panchayat kai bande hain panchayat those numbers are in thousands actually So we are expanding each time. We have a workshop 
we take the technical feedback, what are the requirements. And then our coordinator is Professor Vijay, who, who does it with digital coordination centers. So we are expanding. And areas have already been identified. But sometimes these areas may be different uh, region wise, actually. So those are so there is a technical coordination committee also, which looks how technical and engineering inputs can help to solve the rural problems and vital issues there. These are the new mechanisms we have. So I'll just tell you the numbers. We have 3,200 higher educational institutes under this, and we are active in 648 districts, 28 states, and eight union territories, working with 16,000 villages. And uh, to strengthen this, now we are looking at, we are coordinating in a hub and spoke model, 45 regional coordinating institutes. And we are also linking up with the National Water Mission and Unnat Bharat. And then uh, we have also the YOJAK and the NIRD, PR. And so basically we are trying to link up with other government programs. But uh, yes, so we can do much more with it. The base is there. We have the numbers, we have a mechanism and we are working on that.